What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Compile Swift Podcast. I am your host, Peter Widom. You can find this podcast at compileswift.com. Bit of a newsy one this week. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode when I interviewed Mark and Abe from Skip Tools. It's proven to be very popular, just like their previous visit. So thank you to Mark and Abe for that. Just to recap, if you are at all interested in publishing Android applications, they have some tools for you that enable you to use Swift. Yes, Swift to publish to the Android platform. So check that out. It was very cool. And thank you to them again for taking the time to sit with me. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the news here. Well, first of all, you probably have noticed if you're an Apple developer, I seriously doubt you could have missed it. June 10th to the 14th this year. Yes, WWDC 24. And of course, everyone's trying to figure out what the logo and the graphic and everything else means. To me, the joined WW kind of looks like a wave form in some way, indicating maybe some kind of audio thing. I don't know. That's just my guess. But I'm sure there are folks out there trying to decipher it all. Are you going to be applying for it this year? I'm not. I know some folks that are. Uh, Funny enough, I was joking with some friends that I know if I apply, I'm just unlucky enough or lucky enough that somehow I'll be chosen and then I'll have to figure out what to do. I know that I've taken the somewhat unsensible approach and I've not applied this year. I haven't applied previously just in case, because I'm just way too busy with work and life and everything else. But it did get me to thinking that wouldn't it be interesting if they offered some kind of virtual experience via the Vision Pro headset? So I don't know, Apple, if you're going to be doing that, but just a suggestion would be a great way to ship some of those headsets. But I was also joking with some folks that I'll be looking at the keynote to see if there's anyone in the audience wearing the headset, because why would you go to the keynote and then wear a headset? But there's going to be one or two, I'm sure. Anyway, June to the 10th to the 14th this year, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. I really do enjoy, for all the criticism I have of some of the Apple things, I really do enjoy WWDC. I think it's a wonderful experience, virtually, and it's always great to see like this, and of course Google does one, Microsoft, all the big players, right? But it is great to see that they put some time aside for developers because we are critical a lot of the time that we don't feel that we're recognized quite as much as we should be for the amount of money that we make these companies, especially Apple. And it's nice to have these conferences where we can all get together, hang out with friends. Of course, there's always a lot of stuff going on outside the conference and especially since they went virtual and and they have this keynote, but a lot of people like to get together and have just collections in the area and things like that. And I think that's fantastic. And and it's always great to see that taking place. And I love to see all of the stuff that everybody posts in all the platforms. This year, I don't know what it's going to be about. I think it's clearly obvious there's going to be a lot of Vision OS. That's a given. But I don't know what else will be there. I think it's going to be very interesting. I'm sure... Of course, there'll be updates to Swift data and all of those things, but maybe, I don't know, maybe Vision OS will be the primary focus this year, pardon the pun, on the conference, but I almost hope it isn't because there's a lot of other stuff that needs addressing, right? And I'm not even talking code here, right? I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of things in the developer field at the moment, especially centered around Apple, that has a lot of consequences for us. But we will get to that in the next news item. So next up, yes, let, let's talk about some of these problems that us developers are now facing. And maybe it's not a problem for you, but it's certainly something we're all having to deal with. And I don't think over the past few weeks I've had a conversation with anybody related to any kind of development on the Apple ecosystem or the App Store that, of course, at some point has not come up about those changes from the EU, thank you EU, we greatly don't appreciate them, where we now have to disclose information that will be publicly available on the App Store pages in the European Union. Interestingly, I don't know too much about this, but apparently there is something similar for China as well, but I'm I'm not that familiar with it, but I've heard some folks mention it. But yes, in the EU, what you've got to do now, we've all had these emails, right? We have to figure out 
Are we a trader? Are we not a trader? What does that mean? I don't know. I'm a developer. And I'm not a legal expert. I'm not even going to give you any opinions on this other than this is something we all have to deal with and figure out. But interestingly, I think for a lot of folks, it is stopping and causing us to ask a question, which is how seriously are we going to take or do we take our development on the Apple App Store as far as treating it like a business or just something we do for fun? Because this in many ways forces you to make that decision because you there's consequences, right? At the very least, the consequences will be, regardless of whether you're a business or not, the consequences will be that you will have to provide data that will go out in the public space, phone number, an email address, and a physical address. Now, this causes all sorts of problems, and I'm not going to get into it too deeply, but I do want to touch on it a little bit because there are concerns here, right? I think that there's the potential for some very serious problems for certain groups of people because you're going to put that data out there. And then we all know this, there are some strange people out in this world. And if they don't like your app or whatever, you're giving them information to come and find you. And if you're a business, okay, it's slightly easier, slightly less personal in that it's a probably a, some kind of business address. But I'm willing to bet an awful lot of folks are now realizing that they're going to have to give their home addresses. And there are all sorts of problems that can bring up. And that, I think, is a concern. And I think that that's driving a lot of the conversations. And it should. And I don't know what the answer is here for everybody. We've all got to figure it out. That's the problem. We have no choice. The other choice is, as far as I understand it, okay, well, I just won't put my stuff in the store for the European Union. Well, that's a lot of people right? That is a large audience that you're cutting off. Maybe you're okay with that. But at some point, I am sure this thing is going to expand. And we are going to have to seriously think about how we deal with this, the approach that we take. At some point, it may end up costing you money one way or another, depending on that decision that you make. And and that's why I'm saying about how seriously do we take what we do with the App Store? Interestingly enough, and and I guess in a dark humor kind of way, this is one we cannot blame Apple for, right? For all the bad decisions that Apple makes on things for us developers, this one is enforced on them by a government. And hey, there's a lot of other things going on right now, but this is not Apple's fault, but they have to comply with it. And it is interesting that In some ways, Apple is saying to us as developers, hey, you got to go deal with this. And I think they could do more to help us out. I'll just leave it at that. I think that they have an opportunity here to earn a lot of goodwill and a lot of good PR with developers. And Lord knows they need it right now if they were to somehow help us out, figure out what to do. here. Just saying, Apple, if you're listening hey, it's an easy opportunity for an easy win for you here. And Lord knows you've got enough lawyers to understand this. We all don't. Okay, leave it at that. Time for a break. What's up, folks? If you want to help support the future of this podcast, I would greatly appreciate it. You can go over to patreon.com forward slash compile swift and help support this podcast. And at the same time, get ad free versions along with exclusive content. Thank you to all of you that help support what I'm doing here. I really appreciate it. Break time over. Something else I want to cover here this week as well. It's very interesting that I've seen a lot of folks, myself included, having a lot of problems with the latest Xcode. Xcode 15.x has not been the greatest experience for a lot of folks. It's going to be interesting. I almost am looking forward to WWDC 24 to just please give me a beta, an early whatever version of Xcode 16 so that I can try and move on (laughs) because a lot of folks having a lot of problems. And it's weird to me, again, I I say this a lot, but it's always weird to me how a, a company can provide such excellent tools, but along the way, somehow I got a question they're testing or something because there always just seems to be a whole bunch of issues. And it's just bizarre to me. And I think 
Again, I'd love this year to be another one of those, hey, we didn't come up with some crazy useless features that you don't really need. We decided to absolutely lock down and fix a whole ton of bugs in the development tools. I bet you that would get a massive round of applause from developers at WWDC. Just saying, just my two cents, but I'd love to see that. Again, with the OSs as well, but in particular with the development tools, they really need to fix a lot of stuff and stop putting in features that, whilst they're great, we don't really need them. What's the point in having a a whole bunch of new fantastic features if you've got nothing but problems all the time with development tools? Again, just my opinion, but I know a lot of people have the same thoughts on that. So anyway, that's just a few things this week I wanted to mention and just cover. I've got another interview in the editing bay at the moment, so I'm probably going to be releasing that uh, next week. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to that. I've got some more on the way as well. It seems like these are really popular with folks, and I love sitting down with the folks that we have on the shows. Uh, It's always fantastic to be in a room full of smart people and have conversations with them. So that's what I got for you, folks. If this has been helpful, you, you know what to do. Go tell someone about it. If you have any questions or comments or anything at all, you can reach out to me if you want to come on the show as well. Reach out to me. Just go over to compileswift.com. There's a contact form there. Hey, fill it in. Let's get a conversation going and let's see where it takes us. That's it, folks. I will speak to you in the next episode. <laughs>